cashback, yeah, cashback, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's well, I common. mean, yeah. like, it depends on how you negotiate, you know, like, okay. you can get a cashback. And even if, you know, the crazy thing that uh, there, I heard that there's a mediation that they can, uh, if you want to want them to pay you, they can pay you like weekly or daily. Hmm. It's depending on how you negotiate <laughs> and also depending on how they work. This is no bullshit gaming podcast, two and a half gamers. Sharing actionable insights, dropping knowledge from our day-to-day -day user acquisition, game design, and ad monetization jobs. We are definitely not discussing the latest industry news, but having so much fun. Let's not forget this is a 4 a.m. conference discussion vibe, so let's not take it too seriously. Okay, let's, let's start, I guess. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Um, so this is a special episode uh, which we called West to East session. So uh, yeah, let's let's start with uh, with the introductions. So uh, can you? Yeah, can you yeah, introduce yourself, course. please? Yeah, of <laughs> course. Uh, my name is Guo. Um, I know Jacob and Matteo from the last uh, uh, Gamescom. And it's been four years for me um, working in gaming industry, um, working on uh, business development. I'm currently working at uh, Transperfect Gaming, uh, doing business development, uh, helping studio to uh, launch their game, go global, go international. I'm originally from China, and actually today I'm feeling uh, with. Uh, you guys here yes. uh, but i'm i'm in uh, china my hometown nice. called uh it's a city uh we have uh 15 uh million people in a city <laughs> That's like three <laughs> times our country yes free, free yeah. in slovakia okay nice. yeah yeah and nice. it's really close to beijing so it's like half hour on train to Beijing, and nice. yeah that's in the north of china um, so I'm very excited about uh, this episode and also uh, talking about China market with you guys. Yeah. Yes, we are very excited as well. Thanks, thanks for making the time. <clears throat> no worry. Okay, let's start uh, like with something easy. Like, what's the what's the current situation uh, regarding the the release of the mobile games in China? Yeah, of course. Um, Grow that a little bit. Yeah, so the the, series, the current situation, like, uh, because I think it's this year uh, after, you know, like everything go back to normal after COVID uh, situation. So it seems like very positive um, so far, like when I talking with all the uh, contacts, all my friends in the industry and they are really say that uh it seems like chinese government approving more games but also because um before the pandemic there's a lot of game like submitting to launch in china but then they kind of uh stopped it with the uh, approvals so uh you know the, the famous one i i won't repeat so so much here but the isbn in china is uh, the the um banhao we call it banhao so it's a license that uh, allows you launch in in china market uh and i have some data to share here that uh in the first q1 um, the number of games approval uh, that uh, it's 288 games in Q1, only Q1 of this year, which um, 27 were imported title, like the uh, foreign titles um, imported. The West to East one. <laughs> yeah, the West to East one, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and this number seems really positive because last year it was the total number of the the whole year was 44. So you for can the whole see, year, yeah, for the whole year for foreign titles. Mm, okay. So it's really positive, I would say. Um, and also they for, they forecast 
uh, of this year to have more games, new game titles uh, approved this year, annually will uh, over 1,000. So let's say the, the, the level of uh, games are launching in China will uh, return to pre, mm. uh, pre 2021 levels. Hmm. So but those 1000s, those are like domestic plus the exactly. um, imported ones. Yeah, exactly. not all like he's <laughs> doing. No, <laughs> not all. Of come, it. On. <laughs> come on. <laughs> I hope I hope one day can be all of it. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, yeah, that's the current situation. Also, I want to talk about that, uh, uh, like many of you already know that uh, there's uh, regulations uh, in China. So uh, the regulations still very strict with uh, content, uh, the content you are um, provide well, like the content mm. you are including to the games. There's still a lot of uh, uh, approvals to mm. uh, release any, uh, not even to launch, but also after launch, the live ops operations that. Uh, so you have to submit and then um and then they will uh, approve it to 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 launch the content um so, so even even if i have a live game and let's mm -hmm. say i'm doing updates or events like every two months or something i still need to have the approval for that update to be updated otherwise i cannot update my game do i get that right yeah exactly exactly that's mm -hmm. the current situation now yeah okay yeah and also uh, you know that uh, the play time registration that uh, the mi minors uh, under 18 years old that they are uh, is like it's mandatory for them to uh, play less time and also play only uh, sometimes in the week and uh, I don't I can't remember maybe four or six hours in the weekend only so okay and yeah. it's still like from what was it like from seven till eight or like six till seven like just one hour per day or some kind of thing yeah, yeah. It's yeah, still, yeah. It's uh, still is it is it by the like is it working or is it just kind of like i i read a few articles there like people are buying fake ids to kind of get oh, through this grandpas or like... and grandma's ids yeah, <laughs> yeah well... exactly <laughs> so how, how do you think the situation actually works like is it enforced very much or is it just like yeah it's regulation but like, let's say 50 percent of minors get through it somehow I will say I will say it's depending on the parents, you know, like they are mm. if they are really because I think it's a really uh, a real thing for the uh, for the whole situation in China is like parenting your child uh, is not only the work of the school, you know, mm -hmm. it's like the work between school and uh your parents so they are like really cooperating you know like do everything possible to uh prevent this situation so <laughs> you can get it but then you know when they find out it, you will have uh, uh Big trouble yep. yeah 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 you are in trouble then <laughs> exactly <laughs> Okay, so this this still stays, but it it didn't it, it didn't have that big of an impact on Chinese gaming, did it? Because like my guess is mobile gaming is mainly done again as as we talked before, even in the West, it's by adults, not really by children that much, is it? Um, I think in mobile games that um, like usually when you get uh, ten years old, you already have your own phone, so that's also. Mm -hmm. Uh, like the cut of cut of age of the exactly okay. exactly but more than that but here i think the registration is more to the computer games and so the mm. mobile games maybe have less um like work to do here but uh yeah normally it's um it's for okay. both games yeah okay um yeah i guess let's continue what's there any other regulations on the block <laughs> to know about yeah of course there's uh other things like um uh, to um for the monetization also it's uh really um it's it's like one one once you have the the as in ASDN, and then you need to uh, every time you want to do a live campaign or you want to change any mecha uh, mechanism then the, uh, like uh, inside of the the game and then you need to uh, pre uh, submit 
like uh, do like a... submit again the build and ask for another approval to exactly keep the idea. exactly mm -hmm. everything every time and to include the oats uh in the load box mm. that's uh, yeah also... i think I, they were Ch china was first with this actually like even exactly. before the west but yeah, yeah. it's but, yeah, very right popular there. in china yeah yeah but mm. every time you you want to add anything you need to do the submission submit again yeah. yeah okay yeah that's another one and also uh i think registration are are, are these ones um maybe we can talk about uh the um, a little bit of uh you know like different players the has different channels different community the social medias in china uh the current mm. situation uh, because China, I think the trend now is really like live streaming. Like everyone I know here, uh, especially when I come back, you know, like um, uh, from, it's been like four years for me that I didn't uh, come back to, to home. Like everyone, even if my parents, they are watching live streaming every time, like when they have, uh, you know, in their um free time mm. so that's another trend really strong uh not only uh not only playing games but also you know like do other things like buy shopping and everything but also the uh i have some nephews well I, my nephew like in this case he is watching uh a channel is like Billy Billy, but I, I believe it's like Twitch, you know, Twitch mm -hmm. or YouTube, uh, but Chinese version. So he's like watching it every hour, like uh, in during the the dinner. Uh, we, we, were... we should we should start publishing our podcast on, on Billy Billy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, there's a lot of influencers. Like they are. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice. really trendy in China now. Mm. Mm. And does does it also capture like the general population, not only the gaming one? Because I think like here in the West, it's more of a like gaming kind of. Twitch is started pretty much as a gaming platform. I know there's like a lot of non-gaming stuff there already, but it's pretty much gaming first, or was it before? So, is it currently also the general population in China that like this whole, you know, as you said, shopping? So you watch like live streaming shopping or? Yeah, yeah, really? exactly. Yeah, and on TikTok, there's another one really similar, really similar to TikTok called Kuai Show. My parents like shopping in it and uh, watching live streamings and everything. So I think different uh, profiles they may have, they might have different platforms to watch live streamings. But live streaming is kind of a, a game changer, you know, here in in the lifestyles in China. Mm. Yeah. Okay. That's nice. very interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's quite big uh, YouTube like unboxing and all like fashion. It's like that's yeah. come on. Exactly. You can't even understand. You can't <laughs> even understand. Exactly. Of course, of course. <laughs> now, let's back okay. to mobile. Let's back to mobile. Like what are the biggest stores on, on mobile in terms of uh, you know Huawei, I guess. Uh what else is there? I mean, of obviously like on Android there's like millions of them, but yeah. Any be like the major ones? What are those? Uh, the mobile, um, every mobile brand in China, they have their own uh, store mm. in this case. And then like, for example, Huawei is one of the most uh, popular here in China. Okay. And, you know, like when you have a Huawei phone, it's like, uh, it's similar, like you have an iPhone. So... Mm. And then they, they, they always say that Huawei phone has a better camera. And yeah. And then uh, also, I think um, other brand like Xiaomi is well known uh, worldwide. Um, also, Oppo. And there's another brand called uh, Meizu. And it's also mm. like popular in China. But what I want to say that if you are living in China, you have to like, download a lot of apps because you know for every mobile brand they have their own app and then you also download the one uh owned by tencent because tencent has a one called uh my app there's a lot of mm -hmm. things that you can uh, only you know have those apps on tencent and then mm -hmm. other ones have other apps um 
there's a few. If you own an Android store, you will have a lot of uh, yeah. <laughs> This already Where feels you... like well, wait, wait. this already feels like path of exile. The the skill tree, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like super complex. But where yeah. do you, where do you, like I, I still don't get it. So where do you download the store app? Like from which store if you don't have it? Mm -hmm. That's, That's a question. good question because they always send you a link, and then the link you can download an APK, and then from that ah. APK you download you you enter the app, and then in the mm. app you can. Yeah, so see it's, it's... a lot of ads, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> flash screens and open screens and uh, Insta nice. shows. Yeah. Okay, so it's normal in China to kind of sideload the APKs through different sources, you know. Yeah, I would the say that they have, and... yeah, I, I would say like if in the, you know, in the West uh, country that if someone send me a link, I will be like a little bit afraid to yeah. click on it, right? But here is like my parents are really confident, like click on it and then download it. And then it's just like, uh, I don't know, one one click and then you have, uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, they have trust on the on the link thing. Yeah, on the share okay. link. Yeah. That's very different compared to West. Yeah, Definitely. of course. It, it is. It is. What are the what are the percentages we're talking about? Because I always wanted to know these numbers. So Tencent is the biggest, yeah? Yeah, well, Tencent, I would say, is the biggest one uh, because they have, like, a lot of apps. And WeChat is one of the most used app mm. in China. It's a super app. Like, we call it a super yeah. app. And then if you have WeChat, basically, you have everything. You have everything. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next one, I would say Huawei because they have market share. It's really... Uh, the highest market share in China in a uh, Android Android uh, brand Phone. mobile. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I can share some numbers here. Like uh, Tencent has like more than twenty percent for sure in uh, in the in the uh, downloads Android. users. Yeah, yeah, Android users in in China. Uh, and iOS App Store is always around uh, 15 to 25 percent. Mm -hmm. um, normal. Well, this year I I found some data that uh, Apple with the new phone launch they owns 20 percent of the Chinese okay. market, Chinese mobile market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Huawei owns another 20 percent, uh, and then. Um, um, Oppo, other brand, Vivo owns another 20, uh, Xiaomi owns another 10, and there's one very famous, it's basically, uh, I think it's owned by uh, Baidu, it's called 360, mm. 360 Mobile, okay. uh, yeah, like my parents, and, and it's like sometimes if you buy some brand like um, uh, Xiaomi, you will have this uh, downloaded by default. Pre-installed, you know? yeah. Yeah, when mm. you, like pre-install, exactly. But but if if I get the numbers right here, it means there's just these whatever six or how much we named this mm -hmm. like kind of kind of corners like ninety percent of the market. Is it like all the other hundred stores are just like miniature, literally like nothing? No, I it. think yeah, yeah, exactly. The uh, exactly like you said, they own like more than ninety percent. Like everyone has the same phone and same brand mm. yeah okay it's so so interested. the main main way how to spread market share is through launching your kind of hardware of the phone and then it has pre-installed the store so mm. yeah okay yeah 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 Makes sense but yeah i think yeah yeah, so okay. we have the numbers. So there is the iOS, the Android kind of uh, market share. Yeah, we have the regulations. We so we know what to, yes. <laughs> what to avoid. <laughs> and so like, how do we kind of know and figure out like if it's worth to publish a game in China for uh, for our game, basically? So we have, let's say, we have a casual game that's doing super well and we want to publish in China. Like, how do we, how do we kind of like calculate if, if it's worth it if it's worth it yeah if it's worth it yeah firstly i would say that um normal the uh, thing is you know like um the genres are there's really um some reports that i, I i've been reading and then these years also shows us some data that the uh, rpgs are really popular in china 
and also hyper casuals and also of course have uh, casual games so those genres and really popular uh, i would say if you want to launch in china try first with the the very popular you know games in in china because um it's like um the community of China is very, uh, well, so we are like community, right? So it's uh, like if your friends uh, playing one game and then probably you will uh, start to play or try that game mm. when you talk about it. So that's really normal in China. Uh, and in, So like in... social mechanics are kind of very strong in a way yeah. if, if the game player kind of yeah. supports them. So yeah. MOBAs. <laughs> Our yeah. favorite channel oh, that doesn't work in the West. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That's just... And also, uh, do you remember the game that we talk uh, in uh, PGC Helsinki? Sheep, sheep. That sheep, or... sheep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. We covered it. Sheep, sheep game. That one, like a uh, virus, you know, like because they <laughs> they have application or they have the app in the app store, but nobody was playing the app, but they are they were playing like in the in uh, WeChat. In WeChat, mm. it's a mini program, like a um, H5 game, right? So mm. then yeah, okay. you don't need to download it, but you can share you can with, you, you have, you know, it's like a normal uh, page. Chat message. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then when you, I mean, the, the prob probably the same uh, mechanism for uh, uh, monetization too, because they yeah. show ads and then when you want another chance to try you need to refer to your friend or watch a video. Mm. So, 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 so you would say that if, if I don't have a game that's like kind of covering these popular genres, is it not really worth it to even start the thing here? Mm -hmm. Like if I have, let's say, uh, casual simulation or something that they didn't cover. Mm. I would say if uh, you have, um, so here is another thing. Like if you have, um, like a user base that you can maybe analyze that mm -hmm. if the visuals and other, uh, you know, the graphics and characters or maybe the storyline is fit or adopted more in Chinese culture or in Asian culture, mm -hmm. maybe you can have a try. But normally I would say that if you have other genres, uh, do more research you know, before you uh, launch it and then see that if you can do well that uh, culturalization because everything launched in China need to do adaptation. And like normally for a simulation that uh, it's, I don't, I, I don't want to name a, a, a specific thing, right? But yeah. uh, normally like simulation, if uh, it's not uh, so adapted to the Chinese culture, probably they won't uh, play that much. It won't be attractive. To exactly. Play, yeah. No, it won't be mm. that attractive to, to the Chinese market. Mm. Well, it's so not we... as exciting as RPG or, or mobile, the exactly. simulations. It's like, it's quite slow. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, no loot boxes for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, why not? <laughs> And here's, we are coming to another thing because, you know, like launching to Chinese um, culture or adaptation to China market uh, needs a lot of uh, dedication resources. And, you know, that's uh, also a lot of uh, cost um, on changing all the assets, mm -hmm. uh, porting, everything. It's really costly too. So I would say that if you have, um, like before launch to China, was to do a deep research on what resources you can count on and um, also see that if you can, you know, have a local partner who can help mm -hmm. you to deal with the cultural adaptation and localiz uh, localization. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, also another uh, important point uh, important key to yep. win just, the market. Just to, understand, yeah. just to understand quickly, because maybe like this is kind of overheard, because I think most mm. people just think that localization, which means that let's change the language from English to Chinese, and, and that, that's it, we're done. But there's the other part, which is called the culture adaptation. And culture adaptation, if I understand, is not only 
like changing the assets to be like whatever anime style or some kind of Chinese more attractive version, but also changing the game mechanics or like changing the game itself. Does this also mean that? Um, I would say that normally it can change all of the game and also even the UX. It's a completely different game. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. So, I, I mean, if uh, we are talking about like, uh, so why we why normally that people always say that if you want to ch uh, launch a Chinese market, you need to have a, a partner that help you to, you know, maybe that just also some part you need to recode it. So mm. I would say that is kind of a, not only translation and also uh, just, you know, change the visual thing because there's something that you obviously uh, need to adapt to Chinese customer, like Chinese players. They have their own habits and they have behaviors, different behaviors. If you want to be a successful game in China, mm that's a important thing to do okay yeah. and so so do i get that right that then this kind of local partner they not only kind of help me do this but they pretty much kind of also design the game as you say a little bit like so let's say because whatever daily rewards work like much more heavy mm -hmm. in china or like battle pass works different or something so they actually kind of suggest and change the code and like the functionality a little bit exactly exactly okay mm -hmm. Well, in that case, like how it's like how, how is it possible to actually find a good partner? Because it's like <laughs> everybody's like, oh, well, you need to have a local partner, but like how yeah. to go about it? Who is the like the the best one to to work with? Yeah, well, there's a lot of uh, partner in the, in the market now because, um, but also I would say that uh, there's biggest ones and there's some specific one for mm. indie games. Um, I can name some uh, yes, please. publishers yeah. here. Um, okay. I think Billy Billy, they are doing well. And when I was working in the uh, in the, in my previous company in Huawei App Gallery, I talked with some of them, and they are but they are kind of uh, the hunter, you know, like you yeah. are. Uh, say that if you have a good good game, they are kind of uh, you know like. Uh, reach out to you and then say that if you are interested in to launch in China and they can help you to with this and no, that. So, so they will find you, not you them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So normally like that. for the biggest ones, they are working like this because, you know, it's a lot of uh, time invested to get the ban how because is the ISDN is the ISBN, really yeah. limited. Then they are kind of doing like this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The biggest one. Okay, and then some smaller ones, if you could name, or like any anything on top of your head that you um, think could be good. Yeah, there are some small ones that they are launching H five games and are also mobile. Uh, one uh, I worked with them called uh, Hollywood. Um, so they are hoping to launch. They are based in uh, in the north in the south of uh, China, and uh, they help to launch uh, different. Um, but normally the format is H5. They are interesting to mm. launch because it's easier to manage the assets and then easier to, to launch uh, in the market. Mm. Um, and if you, you are launching a H5 uh, game, it's most likely you don't or will not be requested. It's, it's not uh, mandatory to have the, the ISDN. Ah, okay. So there's Correct. a loophole because you can use. Uh, okay, I understand. So HTML5 games says it's easier than. Exactly, exactly. That's another thing now in, in happening in China. But if you want to launch uh, the app application, then uh, work we with a big ISBN. one. Yeah, mm -hmm. work with a big one. Uh, even though they are expensive, and then they, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> will uh, take basically uh, most of the things. From What's you. A, what, what are the shares, by the way, like a good deal? Like, what would you say would be considered a good deal? Like, I mean, the percentage that goes to you and the, the, the helping partner publisher. <laughs> this is like <laughs> a very, very, uh, I don't know, like everyone that, that I talk with uh, about this, this uh, mm. revenue share, 
they have different number for me. So it can mm. be from like uh, 20 to 80. 80 for the publisher? Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And okay. everything after the UA cost, <laughs> yeah. It can be like this. Okay. And it's still, uh, okay. <laughs> still <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. Still but normally sense. I would say if you can get a deal, very good deal, like for, um, well, 50 can be a really good deal. If uh, they are offering like 50 revenue share after UA and then you, I think it's a good deal. Yeah. They, they are really interested in your game and then, well, they will help to launch it. <laughs> very well in china yeah yeah people are pissed here about 30. <laughs> yes <laughs> it's like oh 30 oh my god <laughs> yeah wow all right uh well okay uh, anything uh anything else besides like uh, like starting to work with publishers like any any other kind of agreement that could work uh when uh exploring china um I think, well, in the, normally for, there's different types, you know, like uh, of mm. the, the agreement or count or different the deals, partnership. exactly yeah. the yeah. partnerships in, in China market. And there is, is really depends. Well, publishers are really common, right? In the, in the market. And yeah. then there's another uh, style, like the dream venture thing that they mm. just, uh, you know, like, um give you know the the, the um, like this is good but you have because you have more control no that that to yeah. to the game um and you have higher possibilities that to uh have you know like uh, enough support to launch mm. to launch games um this can be a good thing. And I know that NetEase, uh, Tencent, they are trying to do it um, a lot. Um, because I remember the last uh, GDC, I probably met, I don't, I can't remember, like more than 10 VCs in the in the party that we host in, the, in at GDC. So they have a lot of people digging like uh, in, <laughs> in that. Uh -huh. <laughs> And, and, but is it, isn't this like joint venture option reserved for like more yeah. like big games? Like you need to, you know, mean something in order to, to even get here, isn't it like that? I think they just, you know, negotiate the milestones, and mm -hmm. then yeah, basically it's just the uh, the the shares. Uh, I talked with some studios that they had um, some investment from uh, Tencent, and that is they are they were just saying that they are just. Uh, uh like supporting not uh, so mm. many management because this mm, is kind of that they have only a vc team but mm -hmm. after after you know you get the money they they are kind of like give you a lot of freedom mm. on what you do but y you need to of course uh complete the the milestones that negotiate okay so 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 it's pretty much like chinese companies funding the western games coming to china okay Exactly. And you know what? At Gamescom, I heard two Chinese just in front of me. I don't know like which company they were working for, you know, but they were talking like, I don't know, like uh, a lot of game companies just giving money there uh, in the in the market. And then a ch like Chinese uh, invest, uh, investment, um, gaming investment uh, company, they were just giving money to make someone in the gaming industry can be retired earlier. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. So retirement money. <laughs> okay. Yeah, retirement money. money. Exactly. Yeah, nice. yeah. Wow, all right. Uh, <laughs> well, but okay. this feels like the joint venture or any other type of deal, except publishing, feels like really heavy in terms of the bureaucracy and paperwork, at least for, I mean, for us on the West, in the West, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh. I, I don't need to care. I don't need to care, care about that too much. I guess they will do the, the <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah, paperwork. Exactly. You just need to deliver the game and milestones. It's like it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. probably. Yeah. And there's another thing really uh, trending in China is licensing. Licensing mm. is uh, like the partnership uh, with different IPs. And they, I mean, China is uh, 
also uh, very, I don't know, like the, the games of Chinese studios, they rely on big IPs. Like mm. you can see games from big studios like uh, Fun Plus. Uh, they are doing a lot of, you know, diff they are working with different IPs for SOS and like they just, it's ki it, it kind of that um, they are including it to do live ops and make the game to be, you know, like more, um, have more revenue and mm. increase. They are really relying on on the on this mm. uh, yeah th this is this is the same deal as like blizzard did with diablo immortal didn't they that it was completely built by netis if i get it right they just had the ip or some kind of small say in it and that's it and then it kind of as we saw it like didn't really do well in the west but in china mm -hmm. it did like 100 million or something yeah exactly so, so, because it's an rpg that's what we talk it's about an rpg <laughs> yeah and oh. if you have an rpg they will find you <laughs> nice <laughs> That's well, good. okay. Uh, I'm interested in like talking about UA actually. Mm -hmm. If we can uh, ju jump into UA uh, in China, because nobody knows about anything, uh, honestly, <laughs> here in West. Like, how does it work? I know um, when I talk to someone, there are some, let's say, uh, kickbacks uh, in terms of the spend uh, from like agencies. But let's let's mm -hmm. not jump the gun. Like, how how does it work in like in general? In uh, in China, in, in terms of the UA. So how much it can work in China? You know. Yes. Yeah. How well, much okay. you can work it on it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. How can I? How can I get there? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, this is a good. This is a very good question because uh, normally, like in um, in, I talk with some friends also. Like in, normally in China, that if you it's like iOS is the most simple thing you can yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, do, yeah. right? But then Android is like impossible to manage your by yourself yeah like everyone if you talk with everyone like give me some recommendation for do you a uh, you know like um, in china they will tell you like this word agency works better than that and that agency works better than this um yeah. <laughs> you know but always with the agency yeah okay. uh with a partner and and also that's i think well most of the friends told me that it's like the way, uh, like the most effective and most, uh, you know, used the way in China, um, because there's so many, th you know, that all the mobile brands and all the applications, uh, app stores that we mentioned, is yep. like too too much to manage by by yourself, uh, and also. Oh, easy for me. I just don't know the language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Okay. Okay. And, and also, I think it's um, iOS. Well, for both iOS and Android, there's a very trend thing. Uh, like Douyin is the now most uh, almost is the uh, almost most used uh, app in mm. in China. So okay. Douyin and uh, Kuaishou, there's another uh, similar. Uh, Douyin, video. Douyin is the Chinese version of TikTok, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, the Chinese yeah. version of TikTok. Uh, you can connect with a account manager, and then they can get you a whitelist, personalized, uh, you know, detail everything like you want to know to uh, for UA in, in Douyin in TikTok. They mm. can just provide you uh, everything, guidelines, and it's nice. simply yeah, uh, work with them. And I know a lot of uh, studios that they are uh, managing it for iOS uh, in doing and uh, by themselves and it's manageable. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So far. I remember like uh, way back in time when the ISBN uh, requirement wasn't even the requirement. I was running iOS in China on Google and I think it was like on the Kubangle or something, yeah. uh, which was kind of possible and easy, but yeah, only I iOS basically. Yeah, basically oh, yeah. only iOS. Yeah. yeah, and and that's another thing. Like, if you want to promote uh, content, uh, like uh, putting, you know, like ads and uh, like doing UA, you need to mm -hmm. also like register. There's some certificate, and mm -hmm. if uh, a foreign studio, you know, a West studio, want to go uh, there, probably they need to need a lot of uh, paperwork before. Mm -hmm. 
Mm, okay. okay. So again, you cannot do it yourself. You need to find a local partner <laughs> or like, imagine an agency. Yeah. And, but anything yeah. else except like the traditional UA and like you know like here like influencers that are kind of like a mm -hmm. interesting part of the the whole UA strategy. Anything like that? Yeah, uh, is uh, is really trendy. Like it's the okay. most uh, thing to do in China because there's a lot of games, like every game, top games, they find mm. KOLs, but not only KOLs, they also find celebrities uh, so in China. So for, for those who don't know, KOL is key opinion leader, right? Exactly. There key opinion go. leader, mm. like influencers. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, Maven Matenos. <laughs> uh, okay. Nice, yeah. okay. Um, mm. the influencers that uh, they are, you know, like have probably the same style or could be a potential, you know, influencer, a micro influencer or um, bigger influencer to mm. your game. Uh, and then they create uh, game content um, in the platforms that I mentioned in Bilibili or mm. in WeChat or uh, in their uh, TikTok channel, like the Douyin. Um, you can find them and then they can create some promotion content, nice. uh, you know, like they can also show some uh, gameplay in their video. Um, yeah, so it's really common in China to find some, you know, uh, the, the influencers and just nice. get some sponsorship with them. Yeah. Um, one question, because you said that like, creatives needs to be approved if i get that right was exactly. that right so does it mean there are no fake creatives in china well, that's a good said question that. that's a good question but um, like do do like do do you see some of those you know like hero yeah. wars like guy falling I, I in the see, lava i see a lot of uh, uh fake uh, ads in china uh, creative in china so i i think they are only uh you know approving if you have any other contents like violence or yeah, like, you know the, like, regular, the type typical regulations basically right exactly mm. they will... so it can be fake but cannot be violent fake yes exactly, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well nobody yeah. cares if it's fake or not yeah okay and, okay. and since uh okay so that's kind of covers the the ua uh you need to you need to have a partner there as well <clears throat> and then uh KO maybe influences day. yeah maybe okay <laughs> Uh, yeah, relocating reloc relocating to China soon. Oh. <laughs> what was the, by the way, the no. kickback part? Did we talk about yeah. that one? Oh, okay, so I, I was uh, I was talking to someone. Uh, it was like a long time ago. So they were running like a Facebook uh, campaigns for someone in the in the in the West, mm -hmm. and basically they they were saying that you if they spend on Facebook, they get as a, as an agency in China like ten percent back from the spend, which was kind of like a fee. I'm not sure if you if you if this is still the case or uh, somebody was like lying Wait, to me. <laughs> you mean like a cashback? Cashback, yeah, cashback, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's well, I common. mean, yeah. like it depends on how you negotiate. You know, like okay. you can get a cashback, and even if you know the crazy thing that uh, there, I heard that there's a mediation that they can. Uh, if you want to want them to pay you, they can pay you like weekly or daily. Hmm. It's depending on how you negotiate <laughs> and also depending on how they work. Uh, yeah. And there's some, yeah, green zone that, yeah, nice. you can okay. probably get a cashback. <laughs> this is okay. really... so better by the moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like Felix said, like everything is a negotiation, I guess. Uh, okay, yeah. interesting. Which can so we us... talk a little bit about Felix stuff that he's not here because he got like surprised wedding <laughs> attendance. Yeah. Oh, no worries. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if you can um, also, you know, like very, uh, that's why you need to get a, a power of negotiation, mm. you know, like get your power <laughs> to negotiate and get prepared to be surprised. Nice. <laughs> wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sounds then I'm good. not. I'm not moving to China at all. I would not be very good at this. Find a local partner. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 It's, it's gonna happen. Okay. So, shall we do like a round around like what was the ad network situation there? Or like let's yeah. Uh, let's let's do like a quick uh, mediation platforms in China and top ad networks, and then uh, uh, then we can. Uh, 
call it a day. Finish with AI. Finish with AI. Oh, <laughs> you, you, you. Finish with AI. Finish with yeah. AI. Yes. Definitely, yes. Definitely. So if you can, uh, if you can kind of walk us through the the mediation platforms in China, that would be that would be pretty good. Yep. Um, I because Felix would definitely like to. I like, I like to know, <laughs> like, yeah. how does it work? Yeah. Um. Okay. So the mediations in China, uh, normally, well, I talked with some friends, and most of them, like, there's only. Uh, they are only using Pango, or mm, the, the TikTok okay. mediation. Exactly the one uh, owned by TikTok, and nice. then the other one is uh, Tap On, and Tap On uh, is like the most famous one or most used mm. one now uh, mm. so far in China. Um, nice. Yeah, and the also there's other others you know others like um um mintagrill and yeah. iron source up uh but normally it depends like if you only want to launch uh you know well your game like uh if, if it's only uh in the west or you also have the game in in china mm. So, mm. but normally these tools are, are the, the most uh, used one. Um, and they basically work with uh, all the as format so far. Mm. And they also, my friend told me that the top on is um, not that detailed, the data, the level of the uh, <laughs> level of data, data is not detailed. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like you need to trust what they share with you. you oh, know? it goes yeah, against yeah, our yeah, yeah, yeah. theory. <laughs> I think they reversed it there. Yeah, yeah well, really nice. a, a little bit, a wow. little bit. Yeah, that's kind of a open secret now in, in the market. But um, yeah, as so, but the strategy is like they, they, they support uh, different, you know, you can sort by different, by pressing, by traffic grouping, by A-B test, by uh, all different, or layers if you want. Mm -hmm. um, so basically they have, uh, the tool is free. Uh, all the, okay. I think almost all of them are free, but you can it's, pay. It's free, but you don't get the data. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pay more it's pay more you can maybe yeah, get yeah, a yeah, yeah. better oh, data it's amazing I, I would really like to see felix negotiating chinese <laughs> oh man oh, well, 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 like, <laughs> oh on the other hand well, well. yeah way, that would be a really nice uh netflix document series yeah of course i remember there was some loophole that people were launching games on ios store in china without microtransactions but just having ads without the requirement of isbn does this still stand or do you think that this can loophole still works? That you can launch an app, just you don't have any monetization, like direct one, and you just have ads. Will will that work still? Uh, like you mean if you have an ASBN or not? Like, no, you don't have it. You don't. You don't have, have, it. have an ASBN, but you want to launch a game. Launch, yeah. A On game iOS with... only. Okay. Uh, with ads only. The, there's there's a uh, a gray zone. I would say yes. There's a local partners that they are working on this. They can help you to to build it. Yeah, um, but you can't yeah. get too big, otherwise you get banned, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I mean, I just hear that they is is uh, as I just heard that is is possible to launch. Uh, mm. Like, it's not total legal, but uh, it's not <laughs> illegal either. So <laughs> great. <laughs> well, it's perfect. That sounds like ex excellent kind of a tryout exercise. Like if you, you know don't want to go through this, just launch with ads, take out the micro tunnel. Because I know I, I work with some games that did exactly this, but this was lot like three years ago, four years ago. I, I remember we did that. But uh, yeah, I don't know what's the situation now. Like as you said, like if the markets, like the approval rate is coming higher finally, maybe like people are kind of less strict these days. So yeah. I guess that works. Hmm. Yeah, nice. Okay. You can... Um, anything else to the ad networks we want to add here? Uh, ad network, uh, the most uh, used thing, and of course, is Tencent because they have the mm. super app, like WeChat mm -hmm. is the most uh, powerful app in, in China. 
and and also QQ. Uh, but most likely nobody use QQ, but they own the QQ email. Like mm -hmm. if you know chi uh, uh, authentic Chinese, yeah. they will own a QQ email. Like uh, th there's a lot of numbers in the probably nine I have or some, eleven. Some of numbers. the like yeah subscribers in my in my exactly. newsletter is the QQ is like yeah. a lot of numbers and some uh, characters as well like uh, exactly. uh, letters and then at, at QQ.com I think. Yeah, right. At okay. QQ.com. That's really like everyone have a QQ email. Even my parents, uh, they are using. Nice. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's great. Yeah. Okay, nice. And uh, besides of Tencent, there's also um, the TikTok uh, one, like I mentioned, Douyin is mm. really popular and well used and like it's increasing like how the, um, you know, this can be monetized and um is really doing is just uh, well used now in China. Mm. And, but also Baidu, they have, um, is the Chinese Google. Uh, they, they are used like by a lot of advertisers. So it's really common that if you, uh, you know, all the beatings you want to do and everything that they, they just, they, they call the Baidu mob it's really similar uh, ad mob. So, mm. yeah, mm. but I, I would say more simple. The, mm -hmm. yeah. Less data. <laughs> <laughs> That's the important part. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Um, and also some of, uh, some from Alibaba and also international ones that, uh, yeah. there's a lot of them. And nice. Huawei ads uh, that, that's something that I, I, I used to work in uh, in Huawei. And Huawei ads also is very uh, well used in, in China. Mm, nice. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, let's uh, wrap it up here so we can actually have another session uh, because I think we have a lot of questions in our Slack channel so we yeah have it's like a, a lot of people even like coming on this one like to get yeah. like a few more questions so few more can... questions so it's uh, definitely if you want to join the yeah. Yeah. slack channel please do so yeah. thanks a lot for coming uh it's really great and then uh our dear listeners this was two and a half gamers podcast which feels like and this is an AI taking us home. So my, my, my Matei AI wrote this for us. It feels like it's leveling up Again. <laughs> with a cheat code. No, it's just fun. It's fun. Uh, so please subscribe to the podcast, join our gaming Slack community and beca become the part of a two and a half gamers family. Thank you very much. Thanks, Guo, for coming. And uh, yeah, thanks for having see, you, thanks for having see you next time. See you next Cheers. time. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.